So good morning, everybody, and welcome to TAMCC's Carico Campus Stakeholders Engagement. I am Trelana Charles, the Corporate Communications Officer at the TMI Community College, and I will be moderating this morning's meeting. We are pleased to have with us this morning, Mr. Norman Gilbert, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Development, Religious Affairs and Information, and Ms. Rolda Pomina, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Carico and PT Matnik Affairs. I see we are also joined by Senator Victor Phillip. Welcome all. From Tam CC, we have our principal, Dr. Ronald Brunton, our registrar, Mrs. Marva Bowie Neptune, and the director of the Carico campus, Dr. Flurgy Patrice. A special welcome to our stakeholders. I see we have one or two already um, who are an integral part of this morning's proceedings. This meeting signifies one of the first steps that will be taken by TAM CC to ensure that our students at our Carico campus are being offered programs and courses which are relevant and will allow them to gain the skills and knowledge necessary to enter careers which will continue to improve the human resource on Carico and PT Matnik. As residents and business owners who operate on the sister aisles, we invite your feedback, your queries and your concerns which will enable TAMCC to best develop the programs and courses which cater to your community's needs. As such, we appreciate your presence this morning. As we begin, I will now invite the permanent secretary, Mr. Norman Gilbert, to make some brief remarks. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Charles. And let me say a special good morning to my colleague, P.S. Uh, Karakop Pitimatnik Affairs, P.S. Kwamina. Um, Principal Dr. Brunton and the staff of the college registrar um, and other members of staff of the college, Ms. Patrice at the Carico campus. Um, very special good morning as well to our key stakeholders who have been able to join us this morning um, and continue to join us as we would progress during the course of the morning to discuss what I believe is a very important part of the development of the TMR show community college. Um, the, the, the Carico campus has always been a very integral part of the college community and has contributed significantly to the development of Carico and Pitimatnik in terms of its human resource. I'm sure that there are many, many, many important um, boys and girls, men and women who have graduated from the campus in Carico who, are, who would have excelled and continue to excel in various fields and support the development of Caracu economically and otherwise. And so the college has a very significant space within the environment in Caracu. And I'm very happy that we are able to have this discussion, which would set the tone for the advancement of the college into the next three to five years in terms of where we would want to see the college go and what kind of support we would expect the college to provide to the Caracu community to ensure their academic advancement. Um, whilst we would want to engage in this discussion, we are very mindful that we are thinking about 21st century education and the transformation of the education landscape to ensure that the, there is relevance in terms of the academic delivery, um, the programming, as well as to ensure that the faculty and staff of the, of the college uh, you know, trained and equipped and the capacity is built to be able to deliver what we expect to be a transformative education agenda. And we also understand the current crisis that the college is facing in terms of its infrastructure in Karaku. Uh, recognizing the challenges there, we believe it is important that whatever development would take place in regards to the infrastructure would be one that is in keeping with the uniqueness of Karaku and Pitimatnik and to provide what I, what I would call the specialized educational needs to service the community of Carico and PT Matnik. So not only do we want to just rebuild a campus, rebuild a physical building, but we also want to rebuild with uh, you know, relevance in mind and ensuring that Carico would be adequately provided for based on the needs of the economic space in Carico based on the needs of the people of Karaku and Pitimatnik in terms of the academic advancement, but also seeing Karaku as a, a, a means through which the persons in the Grenadine Islands can also have service through the education program at the college. So when we talk about the, 
redefinition, and we talk about the repositioning of the college and the redesign of the physical infrastructure, that redesign also have to be in collaboration with the expected short to medium term um, academic agenda. And so this consultation today is key because it will help to guide the, the college in terms of its plan. And therefore that plan that we have for the academic achievement of the, of the community in Karakou would also guide in terms of the infrastructural needs and what would be required infrastructurally to ensure that the programs are, are able to be delivered and are able to be delivered with you know, top quality in terms of the physical space, the physical infrastructure, ensuring that Tibet education is a part of the overall development of the campus, which I believe we also have to pay some attention to. So I don't wanna speak uh, extensively. I know that PS Carico also has a dream as well for, for the campus. And of course the college community also has its dream. And it's good to hear from our key stakeholders in that regard. So I want to just say how happy am I to be associated this morning with a very important exercise whilst we consult on the process in relation to the development and enhancement of the Carico campus. So I want to wish you all a, a very successful deliberation and I look forward to you know, hearing from you in terms of the way forward for this campus. Thank you very much. Thank you, P.S. Gilberts. Um, we will now have brief remarks from Ms. Rolda Tomina. Tomina. Thank you very much, Ms. Charles. And let me acknowledge the presence of my colleague. P.S. Gilbert, principal of the Time CC, um, Dr. Brunton, and uh, Mrs. Patrice of the Caracol campus and all other staff members of staff and persons with interest of Tam CC. Let me say good morning to everyone. Um, Senator Philip, we welcome you as well. And um, yes, P.S. Gilbert is rightly saying that the, uh, I have, you know, some sort of an idea what Tam CC Caracol should be like. And it's not only my idea, but this is from many consultation um, talk with other persons and what we think is relevant to us and what would make sense. However, let me just say, uh, when, Car when Tam CC campus came to Caracol, we were very happy. The people of Caracol were very excited and happy because you know what? It really took a lot of some families to send their children to Grenada. Some could not have gone because financially they couldn't afford. So they had to just settle with the CXC and hope a job comes their way with that and make it from there. When the campus came, we accepted that we just may have a, just a skeleton of what the college would have been. So we accepted just having English, business, IT, because that was relevant. We have, we could have gotten um, tutors or lecturers for these courses. So we said, okay, we're gonna open with what we have, hoping that by today, we'll see a different camp campus. Um, it is not like that. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying to say that we, nothing has happened since the, the, the day it first um, conceptualized and opened. However, I think we sort of have been speaking in circles and not making the move forward. And I hope that from this consultation that we are going to see some step in a new direction for Tam CC Karakou. Now, being an um, educator myself for a lot, a lot of years um, of a high school, I knew, I know the, the excitement of students to leave high school and go into college. I know that. They look forward to going to college. That two years they have to spend in college. They look forward to that, that college life. And um, I know what happens after the two years. I know they have to go out there in a world to make life on their own, find a job. Now I have finished MCC and I'm looking out for a job. So the they apply many applications come to the school, the, the one that they went to, looking for a job and hoping 
at that job, they're going to lock a job there, not knowing there is a vacancy. And even if there's a vacancy, it's only one, maybe one or two that can be employed. I also know the frustration when that time comes and they cannot find a job. But are in their jobs, there are things to do. But is it relevant to what they've studied? No. So we here say that we need to rethink what we do and how we get our students to aspire, achieve the highest level to ensure that they can give back to serve themselves in terms of finding a job to maintain themselves and serve the community. We, Tam Sisi Karaku, I think when we were looking at um, getting a campus, it was what is a bus available. The Six Road um, area became available because there was a primary school there. It was, it was what was available. So it was fixed, quick fix, and to make ready for that grand opening of Tam Sisi campus in Karaku. And we all were happy about that. The, 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 I think our times have outgrown the campus needs to be seen differently. We, just, we shouldn't see just two, three buildings on the ground and see a sign that says Tam CC. It needs to speak more louder than how it is speaking in Karakou. We've, 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 we've over, I should say, over flooded this market, market with IT personnel, with business students, and maybe English or maybe the general studies student. We, over, we flood this market. And coming to Grenada doesn't make a difference because they're going to meet another, another quadri of, 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 of persons who have graduated from Tam CC and looking for a job. So you know what can happen when persons realize that they're at a, that they're at a wall, they cannot climb or get around or even get through that wall. It can be very frustrating. So we look and say, how can we make Tam CC relevant to Caracu and Petit Magnet? What is unique to Caracu and Petit Magnet? Caracu is a, we, we call ourselves the cradle of culture. What is the culture? What makes us the cradle of culture? What makes us so proud to be Caracu and Petit Magnet because of what we have? How can we make what we have be marketable for us and be something that we can make a livelihood from. We can. We have, uh, we have had a thriving boat building industry. And we, we, we were, we were um, relishing in the hand down practices of that industry. So my grandfather was a shipwright. He passed his skills down to his children and hoping that that would go to his grandchildren or go to somebody else who would learn the skill. I think we've now realizing that that is not the case. At some point, a generation would miss getting that skill. Well, how do we harness that skill to be a thriving one? That's where our regatta was born from, our boat building ability, and to build boats that can stand the test of time. And those boats um, were used as, okay, let us have a showcase our boat building skills, in a festival called a regatta. And that was one brilliant idea by Mr. Linton Reeves in 1964, 65, thereabout. And what happened? There are persons out there, like just as a West Indies team, when we were flourishing with the West Indies cricket and we were blasting the place with cricket, all of the other cricket loving countries sit back and look at us, study us, and be able to use those now against us. So persons out there realize the skill or what the, is coming from Karaku, purchase the boats at any cost that was offered because they recognize how, what a skill it is to do these boats. But we do, what we do, we sell them gladly. We didn't pass on, we became selfish and so the skills stayed, but we die. And what happened? The skills die with us, so we don't pass it on. Here we have an opportunity with Tam Sisi Karaku to put that in context. So we can have cheap rights, not just for Karaku context, but for, our, for the world market. So we have an area that we can put into our, that can be relevant, it can, it can be job ready skills. And that's what I'm talking about. We have to make one campus of, of TAM CC a job ready campus. 
And we are seeing Carco and the Grenadines, in part of the Grenadines, be all our boys. When in, well, at, at school, when I have one-on-one dialogue with the boys or the young men of Bishop's College, they used to say to me, Miss, especially the, the young men from Pitimatnik or the, the C community of Carco. You know what they said to me? He said, I have my boat already, you know. When I leave here, I just go into, I go, I mean, I go in and see, I go in the fish, in the fishing, that's where, that's where the money is. And I would say to them, I said, so it's only fishing you, you see yourself doing, and Mr. is where the money is. I said, so what else can you do? They never said, okay, Mr. I want to be a navigator. I want to be able to process this fish to be, so take the fish from the raw state to another state. They couldn't see that. All they see, go into the sea, fish, sell it, whatever, to whom, and to make money. So we had to take our students to see there is much more to fishing than just going to the sea and fish. What can they do with this fish? How can we make that fishing industry bigger than just catching from the sea and bring it to land? What can we do? So we have to look at that as well. Now, I say when you want a piece of paradise, you come to Karakou. Not just because we have Paradise Beach here in Karakou, but for peace and tranquility. And that is what is craved today as a health, as a um, self-care or health well-being. We have that here. How can we harness this? What can we do? What skills can we hone in as to help our people provide that health and that, to keep that tranquil? So people come here to recover from illness, to get, you know, from stress. How can we make our people be a market of serving industry to help this, to hone the skills and to use them to help our economy. So my idea of Tam City Caracol is to make it a maritime college. So we offer such as navigation, marine biology, ecotourism, professional courses, CCATIN, what some of the guys, they would never, they would not be boat or ship, right? And all of this. But at the same time, they need to know the skills of going out there in the sea and even for their own survival. So we make them certified captain, certified sea, sea person, so they can go out there confidently taking care of themselves to come back home to their families because we know what treacherous um, waters can await them there, especially with our. Um, hurricane season and all of that. So in doing that, we're not catering only to Karakou, to Grenada, to the, Car the, the Caribbean persons who want to study navigation know that they, I'm going to Grenada to Karakou campus to do that. Then we can make ourselves relevant. So we get students from Grenada coming to Karakou. And you know what we open up? Boarding, accommodation, because we have to do weekend boat students. So we're making another market for other people. Then we are making ourselves relevant as Tam CC. So instead of having the same thing in the campuses in Grenada and Karakou, we change it around. So if you want to be an academ academia, well, you have to go to St. George's campus. If you want to go into maritime law and maritime whatever, you come to Karakou. So we make that sort of a campus. And that's what I, that's my vision for Tam CC Karakou. And not only my vision, but I'm sharing the vision of many I've spoken to as to what we want to see. We want to improve. And in doing that, if we have that vision, we know what how our building, what sort of our infrastructure we have to do to ensure that we have what we're looking for and to make us stay relevant and true to the culture of the people of Caracol. Thank you very much. So as we, as I don't, I'm not too sure how long the consultation would be, but I am hoping that when we, when we end this consultation, we would make Mrs. Patrick a bit happier as to the next step of what this, um, I know she's tired of meeting and meeting and, I mean, we're making it virtually, so it's different from going to the campus <laughs> today. So we take it from, from the campus and we have it on a virtual scale. But Mrs. Patrice, we are there with you and we're hoping to see that um, fruits are born from all of this labor, lab, laborious work that we are doing now, the consultation, the talking, the forming, shaping of the ideas of how we can re-energize TAMCC and rebirth 
Camp CC um, Campus Caracu. Thank you very much. This is my presentation. This is my Thank last. you so much, PS Comina. Uh, we will now actually go to Dr. Fleur Gay Patrice, who will do a presentation as a director of the Tom CC's Caracu Campus. Thank you. Would you like me to pull up your slides? Oh, yes, please. Thanks. I'll, I'll do that from here. While Ms. Charles is doing that, present morning, P.S. Gilbert, P.S. Kwamina, the principal, Dr. Brunton, the registrar, Mrs. Neptune, and other Tam CC representatives. Our stakeholders. Good morning to you, doc, Dr. Patrice. I, I, I missed that, I guess. <laughs> Mrs. Patrice, you oh. don't say, you didn't say it, you didn't say it to us. Oh, I didn't know. No, 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 no. I think after you left, it happened. Oh, so congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So following me um, from Ms. Kwamina's vision for Tam CC, what I'm going to do this morning is enlighten us on the current situation at Tam CC. So I am going to begin by first outlining the goals of the TA Marishal Community College in Kariaku. Our goals are twofold. We have one, to support our students' lifelong educational development by offering accessible quality programs and training opportunities that are consistent with their needs, their interests, and their abilities. And the second, to foster creativity and innovation, high standards of professional excellence, and to develop within the students a sense of community. The third side, right? Good. Now, at the TA Marisha Community College, we have three main schools or departments. And that's within the entire college, not Carrick only. The School of Art, Science and Professional Studies, the School of Applied Arts and Technology, and the School of Continuing Education. The next slide. Now, at the Carrick campus, all of the three schools that are available, we have two schools functioning. The School of Art, Science and Professional Studies, and the School of Continuing Education. Now, within the School of Arts, Science, and Professional Studies, we have the associate degrees. We have some programs from the teacher education department, and then we do the CAPE courses. The associate degree programs, we have business studies, general studies, psychology, and social sciences. From the teacher education department, these are four short courses that are offered classroom management, classroom instructional planning, methodology of teaching, social studies, and adolescent psychology. Now, interestingly, while pursuing the associate degree here, the student, they have the option to register for these four courses that are mentioned from the teacher department. Upon completion of the associate degree and the four teacher education courses, the student is awarded an associate degree in the chosen field with teacher education. So for example, a student can graduate with an associate degree in business studies with teacher education or an associate degree in psychology with teacher education. Students also have the opportunity to write the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exam. And we have it at CAPE in the following areas. We have economics, management of business, sociology, law, entrepreneurship, environmental science. Law is missing, okay. So they do law as well. The School of Continuing Education, now that is second school functioning here. The School of Continuing Education, now that's a department that focuses primarily on the vast majority of our men and women outside of the formal education and training system. So the school's main aim is to help improve the livelihood of these men and women and to provide personal and intellectual development for them. So over the years, we've 
offered courses and I, I have here some of the areas and some of the programs that we have offered courses in. Small engine repairs, general agriculture, basic tiling, dressmaking, cake making, back tendering. In that school also, we have the Caribbean secondary examination courses, um, which we call CXCs, and we do that annually, mathematics, English A, the social studies, human and social biology, principles of business. Um, what you have seen so far is that our course offerings are limited to the non-science and the non-technical subject areas. And that's due to the lack of both technical and science laboratories. Now, this is one of our biggest challenges. And the other one is the deteriorating physical structure of our buildings. Nevertheless, with today's event and with the feedback that we are going to get from our stakeholders, as well as the questionnaire that we sent out, and I trust everybody would have completed them already. We hope to gather a wealth of information or much needed data that is going to assist us with the development of new programs and the designing of a new campus that will benefit the community of Karyaki. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Patrice. I will now invite Dr. Ronald Brunton, the principal of the T. Marisha Community College, to give his presentation. All right, thank you very much, um, Ms. Charles. Dr. Brunton, you're muted. All right, so good afternoon, good morning, everyone. And uh, first I want to thank P.S. Gilbert for attending the session today, as well as P.S. Fonda. Um, thanks to um, Dr. Patrice uh, for organizing the session. Uh, I just want to say a few words today. Um, to ensure that we uh, have a good understanding of the purpose of this consultation. Uh, namely, as we would have been indicated earlier, uh, we are really planning for the future of Karakou and planning for the future of TAMCC's presence in Karakou, uh, ensuring that uh, we give an opportunity for all stakeholders um, to voice their, uh, their concerns, as well as we wanna hear from you in terms of what is gonna be needed for the growth and development of, uh, of, of Karakou itself. Um, this is a really fantastic opportunity um, for our, our, our stakeholders, namely uh, parents, uh, business, the business community, um, and a broader sense of stakeholders uh, to share with us uh, what your vision is for uh, TAMCC's role in Karakou. Uh, it is really about providing opportunities for all, uh, for uh, young persons who are leaving the secondary school system, as well as adult learners who uh, require reskilling and retooling uh, to be able to better contribute to the socio-economic development of Karakou. So indeed, uh, we are here really to hear from you uh, what, what, are, what is the best fit in terms of programs uh, for the Karakou community and for the business, uh, the business community as well. So really, uh, Dr. Patrice would have indicated that we are in process of collecting data through a set of stakeholder consultations. Uh, so this is um, now our, our video conferencing session where we meet with stakeholders, but also we've been collecting data through a set of survey questionnaires 
that are being administered to parents as well as community members, um, business, uh, business persons. Uh, these questionnaires are being administered by the team at the uh, Six Roads campus. Uh, they're going, been going around to members of the community to ensure that there is uh, participation and we get a, a sense of uh, inclusiveness in terms of the completion of these questionnaires. Uh, the questionnaires are really focusing on what are the specific types of skills, uh, what are, are the shortages in terms of um, the, 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 the shortages in terms of skills in the economy, and asking general questions as well about the experiences um, at the Tam CC campus in Karikou. So it's really a process of collecting targeted um, data so that we can make the right decision in terms of the types of programs and the, the nature of the facility that will be needed. So in terms of our guiding principles, uh, we want to ensure that there's relevance in terms of the programs um, that are needed. Uh, we want to ensure that the programs uh, fit the economic space, uh, that they develop the appropriate skills uh, needed for the growth and, and development of the Caribbean population. Uh, we've been hearing so far uh, about the broad range of skills. And of course, as we see uh, programs being developed for the Caribbean uh, community, uh, we would be able to offer a broad range of courses that are both academic, but also those that are TVET. Um, as, uh, as, as the economy grows, we want to be able to deliver those programs that are also needed and that can be offered in a short space of time. So um, the School of Continuing Education will offer the opportunity for those short courses that are tailor-made for um, the, 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 the purpose of the business community. Uh, so through the data collection, we are able to identify uh, specific uh, types of courses that are going to be needed and to be able to develop those uh, based on the menu of programs that we also already offer at the St. George's campus. Uh, fortunately, uh, we will be able to provide uh, those courses both in person and as well as using the, uh, the video conferencing and the online modality to be able to offer a broader range of programs in character. Um, as indicated by uh, PS Pomena, we want also to be able uh, to offer programs that are culturally appropriate and fitting to the Caribbean community uh, to ensure that the history uh, is preserved, uh, to ensure that we can uh, to, to tailor make our programs to fit uh, the community itself. So the, the cultural significance of, of the Caribbean culture uh, should be integrated into the programs that we offer, as well as even offer the opportunity for those who are outside of Caribbean to experience uh, that culture as we open up the, 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 the programs, uh, not just the students in Karakou, but also to the entire region uh, that would be able to experience, uh, you know, those unique aspects as well. Uh, of course, as we, as we develop our programs and the offerings, we want to ensure sustainability uh, so that as we, as we grow, the, the campus itself, as we grow the number of programs, uh, that we're able to ensure the sustainability of the campus in Karakou, but also the sustainability of, of, um, of the Karakou community. All right, so some of the aspects that we want to consider in terms of um, the, the campus that we want to envision for Karakou, uh, certainly a state-of-the-art facility uh, that uses uh, technology appropriately, uh, that is fit for the types of courses that are to be delivered, the types of programs. If we're talking about maritime studies, we want to ensure that the facility has the appropriate space, uh, that it has the, uh, the equipment necessary for marine uh, studies, uh, that there's the, uh, you know, the, the support uh, to be able to deliver those programs. So we also would need to have appropriate instructors, uh, appropriate faculty uh, to be able to deliver those programs. So in terms of the design of the facility, uh, what we're doing here today is critical uh, in terms of ensuring um, the, the physical space is appropriate. Of course, as we look to make the investment in, in 
Caracou, uh, we want to ensure that whatever we design is going to be appropriate for at least the next 100 years or possibly even longer. Uh, so it has to be purposely built and designed to stand the test of time. And of course, we're hearing a lot about uh, green buildings uh, using sustainable energy, uh, alternative energy sources to be able to power the campus and of course use the, the, the types of building techniques that are going to have a, a limited impact on the environment. Um, of course, as we invest in technology, and so much is coming out now in terms of be developing smart buildings and smart technologies uh, to ensure that our campuses are appropriately wired, uh, that we have um, security uh, in, in built into the building, that the building is can be used less uh, electricity and resources uh, through the use of smart technology and smart building. Uh, so in terms of uh, what we envision for the campus, uh, we're looking really at a campus that is purpose-built, uh, one that fits into the environment, and one that is designed to offer the types of courses and programs that you as stakeholders uh, believe to be important for the future development of character. All right, um, so again, uh, I, I really want to uh, express my uh, sincere uh, pleasure for having this opportunity uh, to be here this morning, to participate in this event, uh, to have worked with Dr. Patrice, uh, who has been uh, you know, putting in the hours to, you know, to ensure that this uh, session is productive. Dr. Patrice, thank you again for the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the organization and planning. Um, and again, we want to open up the floor at some point in time uh, to hear from all the stakeholders. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Brenton. Actually, the time you spoke about is now. So at this time, we will want to open the floor to our guests and our stakeholders to ask their questions or give their feedback and suggestions. If you wish to give your input, you can indicate by raise of hand in the chat. Um, and once you're called, then you can unmute your, your mic, identify yourself, the business you represent, if you're a stakeholder, and ask your question. You can also ask your questions in the chat, but I'm asking that you also identify yourself there as well. Hello. Yes, Mr. Junior McNeil, you can go ahead. Yeah, present good day. Um, I'm on the hospital at the moment, so my audibility is not so good, but I'd like to make a contribution there. Um, I don't know what plans you all have in terms for developing. I watch you of the cultural practices of the people of Caraguay in the marine industry knowing that we have a um, few um, mariners on the island and many of our young people are into the boating and shipping industry. Um, if you all have any plans, or at least I'd like to recommend that we see some active training, for instance, in navigation. Um, they have to go to Trinidad to get some kind of certification, you know, to, to come up to, to, to speed in terms of um, um, the, the marine um, qualification, so a nautical qualification. So I would like to see that something is done in that area. All right, so that's what my contribution for this morning. Thank you. I'm not sure if anybody would want to respond or... Um, just uh, good, good morning to everyone. Uh, sorry good morning. To put it there. Um, I would like to respond to that. I'm sorry I was not in the beginning because I was having some um, issues with the internet. 
but however, I'm here, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy um, to see everyone that is here. Thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, just a response to the gentleman. Um, uh, it is also a part of my, my, my idea and dream um, to, to, to share the, the course as what the gentleman had just um, alluded to in terms of uh, um, this is my dream also, as, as also the, um, the, um, the lady in the, in the ministry, like the cameraman is coming on, something like that. Um, they talked about the, the, the fact that, um, you know, we should look at some of the particular skills that will interest the people of Cairo. You know, so that, um, you know, they can't embrace what they know and, and further get studies so that they can do it in a more professional way. And which is one of them is maritime. And I'm, I'm, I'm for the one that I think that the nature of the house is, you know, we cannot get everything happen in one location. And so we need to, we need to, we need to start, um, you know, cutting out or separating and, and using some of the, uh, well, one or two of the other campuses and different things there where people could directly go and uh, do those things. For Karaku, I think that um, the issue of having there as a, um, mainly as a maritime institute of other things, but I think that is needed there. Um, it's coming also talked about the fact that, you know, the students talked about well, in secondary school, they already have the boat and, and the engine, you know, so what, what should they be looking for? Um, if, if you mentioned, you mentioned about certification in navigation. Um, they have to leave from Karakou, as I know, uh, way of that too, they had to go to map, they have got opportunity to do that. And I think that, um, you know, I, I, I dream that one, one day this would be a reality. So those of us, even in, in Grenada, who wishes to get into the maritime business, because we must not look long ago the days where we, we look at the moon and, 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 and the tide and stuff like that to go out. I think um, the world has become too scientific for that, and there is enough equipment to guide our, our, our maritime people in, in the right direction and, and so that they can make the best of the, 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 um, the industry. And so the, I think it's on us and us as a country and as a school at Tam CC, so that we can provide, as I said, Tam CC should take you from where you are to where you want to go. And I think we need to follow that. And um, I believe in, 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 you know, in, in, in the idea of making some form of relativity of maritime industry in Caribou. So just, just to add to that, um, as part of that team moving forward, this is something that I would push. Thank you. So um, I, I just want uh, to speak to that issue, uh, Mr. Philip and uh, McNeil, um, also to reinforce uh, what Ms. Uh, Ms. Kwamina had indicated. Indeed, um, you know, the concept has been around for some time now. Um, in, in a way, you know, you can't do uh, all programs at all campuses, uh, that there needs to be some level of specialization. Uh, and so indeed you build on the strengths of, of the campuses. So uh, in a sense, we're really talking about a sort of a center of excellence uh, where um, the Caribbean campus can be known, um, not just nationally, but regionally as, uh, you know, as an institute of marine studies. Uh, and that in fact, uh, you know, we would spend quite a lot of attention uh, to build that capacity uh, to ensure that the um, maritime studies uh, become very prominent, uh, but also that we market uh, this, this potential throughout the region. And instead of our students having to go, as you say, to Trinidad or to Jamaica, um, you know, to become certified, that we would see people throughout the region coming to Karakou uh, to do that. Uh, I, I think it's really an idea that has come uh, to fruition. Um, we, we would need to really ensure that we have um, the right curriculum. Uh, it requires uh, certification of the campus itself um, because, of course, we would have to meet international standards uh, in order to do that. Um, so, you know, we're really talking about a, a vision um, of the campus, what can be, um, but also what will be required to make that a reality. Um, you know, what, what would be the infrastructure? Uh, how do we uh, meet those international standards uh, and really develop the campus to that extent? Um, so it, it, again, just reinforcing the concept 
um, it, it, it is indeed, I think, um, one that we would really have to take stock of and realize that a lot of planning will need to go into place. Uh, but of course, when, when there is a will, there is a way. Thank you for your contributions. Is there anybody else? The floor is still open. I think we can probably move on. And obviously we, we would make it um, possible for any stakeholders. We'll make the video available to them and they can always reach out to the Carico campus, Dr. Patrice, to share any additional concerns or queries or so that they have. So taking that into consideration at this time, I will invite our registrar, Mrs. Marva Bowen Neptune, to say thank you. Good morning uh, to everyone. Um, in particular, a special good morning to both PSs, PS Norman Gilbert and PS Comina, Dr. Branton. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Senator Philip, and of course, Dr. Patrice and everybody else, all stakeholders attending this consultation. On behalf of the TM Marshall Community College, we want to thank you for taking the time to come here to discuss the affairs of the Carico campus. It is a long time coming and we are very grateful that you have taken the time to reflect on what is needed at the campus. Of course, we understand at the uh, college that we must peg our programs to fit the needs of the community that we serve. And of course, this consultation seeks to, um, to do just that. We thank you for just listening and um, learning of the programs and the way the campus is structured and getting an understanding of where we can take uh, the Karaku campus for the betterment of all our students and in um, general for the betterment of Grenada, Karaku and PT Martinique. Once again, on behalf of our principal, we thank you very much for coming out and listening to us. And we hope that we'll continue to partner with Corporate Grenada in um, realizing what we have as a nation and as a college community on the campuses, not just in Karaku, but also on the main island of Grenada as well. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Neptune. So that takes us to the end of this morning's meeting. As I said before, if you have any further questions, any contributions, do not hesitate to contact TAMCC by email at info at or you can contact us via telephone at 440-1389, extension 6225, or you can contact the Carico campus directly at 443-6753. So that's 443-6753. Once again, thank you for joining us and have a good afternoon. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye. And we look forward to hearing from you.